The battle between Apple and the federal government is getting more contentious. A filing from the Justice Department criticized Apple for allegedly helping the Chinese government access customer phone data while now refusing to aid U.S. agents in a terror investigation. Here with more details is Wall Street Journal reporter Devlin Barrett. Devlin, great. Another day, another Apple headline. What is the crux of the Justice Department's arguments here? Well, the Justice Department is really escalating its war of words with Apple with the new filing. They're basically attacking one of Apple's arguments, which is that if we do this for the U.S. government, if we help you open this terrorist iPhone, uh, other countries with bad human rights records will demand we do similar things for them, and that will endanger uh, freedoms in other countries. Um, the government's really pushing hard back on that, saying essentially accusing Apple of already uh, caving to China specifically when it comes to government requests for information, a charge that Apple vehemently denied after the filing. Okay, so how exactly did Apple's lawyers respond to this? And did they also explain how they did or did not cooperate with Chinese government requests in the past? Yeah, so what, they, they, what the Apple lawyers said was that this is a ridiculous and desperate accusation. Uh, they also just called it a cheap shot. Um, what you're seeing is that some of the, even while this is a legal fight, uh, what, happen, what, is, what is happening right now is a lot of the, the battle is becoming a war of words and, and frankly, uh, you know, some trash talking mm. uh, from t between two major institutions. And so what Apple says is that what they do in China is not nefarious. It's not any, any particularly more, uh, you know, invasive of privacy than anything they do for the U.S. government or other governments when they make law enforcement requests, that Apple is in fact very careful and they don't even keep the encryption key for a lot of the data in China. They don't even keep that key in China itself, even though the data itself is encrypted in China. So Apple's argument is that they are very careful with their customers' data in China and the U.S. government is essentially just making a bunch of accusations to try to make them look bad. Mm -hmm. Because there have been requests in the past made to Apple by the Chinese government that Apple has denied, correct? Well, I think I think there's there's always a, it's a degree of cooperation, right? And so what 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 what's been out there is the notion that Apple has uh, met or complied with about 75, 76 six percent of uh, the Chinese government requests for data about, you know, about uh, Apple customers. Um, the number is fairly, that same set of data though suggests the number is fairly comparable in the U.S. and may even be a little bit higher in the U.S. Right. So it's not clear that that really means what the U.S. government th says it means. Right. Um, you know, the, Apple's argument is that, that they're cherry picking facts and trying to misconstrue what's actually going on. So Devlin, how notable is it that the Justice Department is striking a potentially inflammatory tone in these filings, as you mentioned, a little bit of trash talking. Is this a sign of things to come perhaps? I think it is. I think what you've seen is a steady escalation, and, and this new filing is definitely an escalation. But there's also a weird twist in what they filed yesterday, uh, what they what they filed here, and that's, you know, last week uh, the FBI director said that they had made a mistake in handling uh, the the San Bernardino phone. The filing this week actually says no, we didn't make a mistake. Mm. There was no way we were ever going to get data off that phone the way we said. And so that's confusing to Apple. It's frankly a little confusing to me as a reporter that their position on such an important piece of this has changed in the course of a week. Right. And I, I expect to see more fighting just over that part in particular. But look, bro broadly speaking, this is, get this is getting nastier mm -hmm. and it's probably going to keep doing so. And Devlin, here we are and no one's even in court yet. Is that right? When will the two parties <laughs> actually meet in court? Yeah, that's going to be in about two weeks, and so I think it's fair to expect pretty heated arguments there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that one of the oddities of this case is that both sides are already treating it as if it is, you know, uh, essentially already being argued before the Supreme Court when you're talking, what you're really talking about is a very, very low-level case still. So, I mean, this fight is likely to, dr to drag on and play out over months, if not years. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's this angry this early suggests that it may actually be angry for a long time. Indeed. And as you say, there don't seem to be any signs of settling anytime soon. Thank you so much, Devlin Barrett, for that. Thanks, Tanya.